Warning, this show may cause you to play more. The consequences of this can include enjoying work, looking forward to coming home, dealing effectively with challenges, and being happy. Welcome to Play DHD, the premier resource for expert information, conversation, and content focused on play and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder with psychologist and ADHD coach, Dr. Kirsten Milliken and author Stacy Turris. Welcome to Play DHD. Hi, welcome to Play DHD. It's Dr. Kirsten Milliken and my lovely co-host, Ms. Stacy Turris. How are you doing, Stacy? I'm really great. Really, really great. How are you? I am excited. You know, I just went to the ACO show. Um, I think I might have said that during the last time that we talked and did a presentation. And then two weeks later, I went to another, um, like a business kind of event conference. And while I was down there, what is up with my camera? Hey, it keeps on like... I was going to say, um, I think you just had a... I had a moment. My camera's having moments. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, but while I was there, oh God, I'm having more moments. <laughs> <laughs> they must be senior moments. <laughs> I turned For your birthday, your birthday, and I, suddenly you know, you're dropping your microphone yeah, and all, I, everything yeah, just goes to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, but while I was at this conference, I have to say I was a little um, what's that? What's the Jewish word like? Verklempt or whatever Verklempt. it is. Verklempt. <laughs> And I, and Diane, dear sweet Diane was there and she said, what's going on? And I said, well, you know, I don't know. There's this person who irritates me. And I said, and it probably has to do also with the fact that I'm going to see my mother and, you know, my mother will probably watch the show and be like, oh, great. This is why, oh. you know, this is what was going on before I saw Kirsten. <laughs> um, and so Diane started talking to me and, and she said, oh, your mother had, you know, her language of love is this. And I, and it was gifts. My mother's language of love is gifts. And I said, well, that's all well and good, but I feel like I have to bribe her. And um, because she mean receiving gifts, not necessarily giving her. Right. her well, and you know, so Diane, I'm sure we'll talk about this some more. Um, and so we were talking about this, God, these, you know, we have this issue with headphones here. Um, so Diane was talking to me about the languages of love anyway. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, we've got to have her on the show. So she's here with us today, and, and I'm going to introduce her in a minute. But I also just, before we get going, um, want to chat with you a bit, Stacey, because I miss you. Aww. I do. I miss you a lot. We haven't been talking that much. Um, you had a quite, we've had quite a busy three weeks. We have got quite a busy three weeks, I think, between um, our playcations that we've been going on and all of these conferences. And I have another conference coming up. And I, I know, Stacey, I wasn't sure that you were going to be able to make it, but I'm hoping that Diane might be able to make it. We're going to the ADA conference, Adults um, with ADHD conference, which is going to be in Detroit in July, I think the 18th to the 21st. And Randy Coleman and I are presenting on learning executive skills with play, right? That's awesome. I know. They're already plugging us right up with Rick Green from Totally ADD. So I'm like, Aww. I think I'm making the big times now when I'm being like, <laughs> You know, one sentence down from Rick Green. Actually, That's I think I was a sentence good. above him, so I even got mentioned before him. Nope. Hey, dude, just go do a shtick in the street, and then you'll be up there. There you go. There you go. So that's coming up. And then, you know, we're also working on building our team for Play DHD because we have some um, events that we're putting together and also our plan to play calendar. Um, and I actually started writing a book while I was gone because I had nothing else to do. Oh, gosh. So <laughs> got a lot going on. And it's my birthday! Yay! Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> so I want to introduce Miss Stacy. Or actually, I want to introduce Diane. We already know you, Stacy. Oh, yeah. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about before? No, you go? no. I, I, anytime you ask me that, my brain just goes, Aah! But you went on. On this, you just went to this ranch. What was the <gasps> ranch that you went to? Oh my gosh, I do have a slight story. Just a really quick story I'll tell we're you guys. Make, we're going to make Diane wait one more moment. This just one more time. moment. This is our girl um, time. Uh, oh, what? oh, it's girl time? <laughs> it's girl time. <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> okay, girl. so I went to this ranch 
It's called um, Texas Safari Ranch. So anyway, our friends, friends who are now our friends own it. We go out there a couple times a year. It's like thousands of acres and there's all these, you know, zebras and camels and oh everything out there. Anyway, so I um, see this yak whom I need to take a picture of because my girlfriend's daughter loves yaks for some reasons or for some reason. So I'm, we're in these like mules, you know, the electric mules that you can get in the buggies and drive through and, you know, yeah. kind of quad over. Well, anyway, we're in this, and so I get out, and this thing's in a pen, and most of them are free, but they were newly integrated, so they had to separate them. So anyway, he's in a pen. Well, he gets pissed when I start, you know, I'm like, <laughs> 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 right? So he gets mad, so he kind of starts bucking and whatever, and I, and anyway, I could feel that he was not happy, and he kind of lit, put his head down, and I could tell, you know, things were not cool, and I actually, and I don't have, you know, any regard for safety whatsoever, but I can feel danger. There's no well, fun in, in being safe all the time. No, there's no fun in safety. So I'm, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go hop back in the buggies, and all of a sudden, that dude walks down and walks out of an open gate. Oh, and my God! Literally, if you've at that feeling, I can never explain because he's probably 15 feet away from me. Anyway, chaos ensued. I spider monkeyed up the fence. I was up there for like five minutes and the girls are, there's 12 girls screaming their brains out, screaming. My mom gets out, gets this little tiny stick and is trying to like get this <laughs> yak. And you know, they have these huge horns. Like we just oh knew I was God. going to get impaled. Anyway, I, I am probably going to be mentally balanced from that for like three weeks because I had so much going through just like oh adrenaline God. and everything. I laughed my butt off. I, there were some tears from some of the other ladies that didn't quite get the, she almost died. She almost died. <laughs> They're going to need your help, Diane. They're going to need a little coaching oh, around this for, mental, for emotional stability. The near-death <laughs> experience was just um seriously made like my month it was awesome so can you see can you see my curtain here moving yeah i was wondering I gotta, about that i gotta tell you um hold on <laughs> this this one wants my attention he wants <laughs> my attention <laughs> you know i got i gotta mention our little sad moment oh yeah a little sad moment my other puppy dog had to had to he put down because she got really oh. sick. So yeah, uh, flies all on his own now. So, Here, so let's, pour, let's pour some water out for her. I know for our right. home girl. There you go. <laughs> okay. I was gonna be morbid. I have her ashes, but I thought that was a little too much. So oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep those Fine. off. There. Comforting. Okay, so yeah. well, Diane, what are you so doing? Diane, over there? Let's talk about Diane. <laughs> Diane is actually the CEO. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're up to time for an ad now. <laughs> Diane is the CEO and founder of Inner Progress Coaching. Um, she works with professionals who are tired and feel like there aren't enough hours in the day to discover the real cause of stress in her life. I've got to tell you, I'm going to go off of this thing. <clears throat> Diane, like, gets to it. That's all I have to say. Like, this whole thing with my mother was making me crazy, and it's actually something, you know, that I've been, and it wasn't just with my mother, it was with this other person, too. And she said like three things to me. She listened to me blab for a while. She said three things and I was like, good to go. And she, she asked me the next day, like, did I process? Did I need to talk with her no more? I said, nope, I got a plan. I know what I need to do. I figured it out. Thank you very much. And this is not the first time that Diane has done the, like these little mini, mini coaching things with me. So, but today she's going to talk to us about the languages of love, which kind of fits into a lot of the work that she does. So Miss Diane Dempster, Welcome to our show. Hey, everybody. You can <laughs> nice tell that Diane does not have ADHD because she has been so patient waiting. <laughs> well, my feet are like wiggling and I'm like trying to move around in my feet. Now, we I should also say that your business partners with Elaine Taylor Klaus, who was on our show before with Impact ADHD, so you know enough about ADHD. Yeah, who does have by ADHD? You. I do. Yeah. And in fact, that's what I was saying to you guys before I came on the show. It's like, I live with you folks. I work with you folks. I just can't seem to get enough of you. So, you know, I think I, I'm ADHD by proxy or I, I don't know. what it You is, just dig us. You dig us. She's an honorary member of the club. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm glad to be here and talking. I guess we're going to talk about languages of love, but I, I guess I want to can put it in context, Kirsten, because I think the big thing. Absolutely do, because, you know, that was just a moment. And I know that you do a lot of work with a lot of different things, and this is just one piece. So you go right ahead. It's your turn. Well, sure. No, I think that the, the big piece of what um, that conversation was all about for me is about understanding that we're all different. And that our family members, whether it's our kids or our spouses or our parents, which is what you were dealing with, um, you know, we, we all are a little bit different and we forget that because we live life in our own little bubble from our own little perspective. Okay, this is the way the world is. It's all perfect. It's all, you know, whatever your flavor and your viewpoint of the world is, but everybody else's is different. And it really makes it difficult because we start you know, we, we've got, in order to figure out what we want, we've got to judge everybody else's. And judgment is the place at which it really starts to fall apart and gets kind of all caught up. And so <coughs> you're sitting there and you're looking at your family member and you're going, what are they thinking? You know, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you. Right. Why do I have to give her something for her to like me? <laughs> Which is exactly the thing. It's like, why do I have to give my mom something? I don't want to have to prove that I love her. And it's not so much that you're proving that you love her. It's just that you're demonstrating that you love her. And, and she hears things differently than you do. And we all have our own perspectives and our own beliefs in life. And I think that the, the core of it all is just understanding <laughs> that there, there is no right or wrong to anything. And it's not, uh, and I think this is the, the quote that you might have put on the page. It's like, it's not a problem, it's a puzzle. And so if you decide that you want to try to have a relationship with someone, it's about understanding how they're showing up at any given moment and trusting that that person is showing up in a way that is um, authentic and is the best that they can do. And I think that that's the big thing, is that I believe in my heart of hearts that we all do the best that we can in the moment at the level of consciousness and with the level of understanding that we have. At the right. Time. Right. I, and I think that if more people could view the world and other people like that, I mean, just think of it like I'm always having to put myself in another person's, especially like my husband's, because like you said, our, our world consists only of our perception. Yeah. And so he's in a whole other world. And so we were talking about that this morning because I was talking to him about what we were going to, um, you know, what you were going to talk about today. So I was explaining, I've never actually read a book on love languages or anything like that, but I've heard of it enough. And, and so I was telling him the different love languages and I'm telling you, he and I could not come up with one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Stacey, you couldn't come up with one or you couldn't settle on one. We couldn't come up with one. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how I show my love. Because he's like physical. He's more, you know, more sensitive, more emotional. I've had to literally learn how to tell him more I love you because he requires that. And, and he does that to me, even though I don't necessarily need it. But he needs it. And so I've kind of now it's become a habit and not quite so painful, but before it was just like, damn, why do I have to, you know, I love you. You know, I love you. Like, why do I have to say it all the time? So, oh, yeah. and it's the, and the reality is that you're not really saying it because if you're not speaking their love language, it's like you're speaking French and they're speaking English. Exactly. It's completely different. And you don't, and you don't think about it that way. And when it's not organic too, that bothers me. I'm like, why can't I just be organic? You know? So anyway, and, and eventually you can be, I mean, I think the reality is that if we finally, if we figure out kind of what it is that our partner or whoever best hears, we, you know, we can, it can become more organic. It feels foreign because it's not our language. So right, you're, right. Saying, you're saying about your mom is that if her language is gifts and yours isn't, it feels almost, it, it feels ingenuine. It feels right. like a different language. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It is. Well, I mean, and this, and I mean, our conversation kind of does parallel what we talked about with Elaine, which was the play styles and, you know, how parents mm -hmm. may have a different play style than their partner or their kids and that we really have to learn to accommodate those um, and get in the habit, learn that maybe there are parts of that that they enjoy. So I remember my mother, and this is how I think you said, oh, your mother's language is gifts. Like the biggest compliment that I remember her giving me was that I was really good at giving gifts that I always gave something thoughtful that showed that I was paying attention to what the other person 
liked or was interested in and things like that. And so it's not that I don't like giving gifts. I, I actually like, you know, I'd be bankrupt much, all over again yeah, because I love buying things give. for people. Right. But when I feel like that's the only um, exchange, sometimes it's frustrating. So yeah, well, it is, and and I'm and I'm thinking about the gift getting giving, and I um it's reminding me of my stepson, and he's 28, and I um hopefully I'm not going to tell on him, but he I won't tell everybody his name, but um, <laughs> his his love language is gifts, and he we his um his dad, my husband, grew up in this environment where people actually used gifts and and kind of were more I guess manipulative, and it was kind of like well I gave you this, so what are you going to give me? Uh, sort of dynamic, which was not exceptionally healthy, but in looking back at it, part of it clearly was because they had that love language. But so he grew up in this environment and his love language is now gifts. So at Christmas time, he's always, you know, getting everybody something. We had this Aww. moratorium on adult gifts two years ago and he refused the moratorium. He's like, no, 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 I got to get gifts for everybody. It's, and he's really good, like you said, at re thinking about what you really like, Aww. even if it's not expensive, but he really goes out of his way to find things that you enjoy that that are important to you and not just a gift. I love him. Yeah, Stacey, we, need to, we need to take a break for a moment because you know that we have, we have our sponsor, ADD Crusher, that we need to get on here. But when we come back, Diane, will you talk about the different languages of love for us? I will, absolutely. Please, please you right. have to come up with one for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go to our sponsor. Do you wish learning could feel more like, I don't know, playing? Well, ADD Crusher videos are guaranteed to help you create mental focus, get and stay motivated, manage time and more. And these videos are a blast to watch and learn from. They're like veggies for your brain, but candy for your eyes and ears. They're like having your own personal ADHD coach who's brilliant but crazy. And right now you can get 20% off ADD Crusher videos by using promo code Play DHD20 at addcrusher.com. Oh, we're my back God. now. <laughs> Did I mention that if anybody knows this company called, I think it's Dolly, I don't know, but they've got all these really cool things. I'm loving these. Look, if I didn't already have glasses, I could have glasses. Those look like you. You are the, you are the right? tchotchke person, the tchotchke oh, girl. That was great. That was great. Uh, I could be wearing a bow tie now. Look. <laughs> my middle schooler's going to a masquerade ball for his like eighth grade dance. Oh my god. Oh, and it's so he's cool. Find a mask. So I, I I wish I'd known you could send me something. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, there you go. So tell us about the languages of love cuz you know, we've been I think Stacy and I've been hogging all the time here. That's all right. It's all good. So the five love languages was created by um, Gary Chapman, and it's a it's a great book for anybody who uh, want, likes to read. If you're not a reader, they've got a really great website that's called five number five love languages dot com. And um, the five love languages, just to start, are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Oh, quickly go through that. What? Yes. Did you figure out what you <laughs> I'm thought? on there. I'm quality time. Your quality time. Yep. Okay. So tell us what you think what do you think of when you think of quality time? Well, this is what I this is what I know. So when it's basically whatever or whomever I'm focused on at that given moment gets a hundred percent of my attention. Mm -hmm. Now when I am focused on something else, they probably get zero <laughs> <laughs> all or nothing right but when i am when i am focused on someone i will make them feel like you know they go to the moon and back because i give them everything i have and so that to me would be the quality time that makes perfect sense that makes okay sense. kirsten which one is yours mine is physical okay so Tell us what that's like. Well, don't, 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 don't get too personal. Yeah. But tell us really? Oh, yeah, do, do, do. Edit, edit. Um, <laughs> I'm grateful that Austin is my partner. <laughs> he likes to hold hands <laughs> and hug me a lot. Um, he's also a Reiki practitioner. He's been trained in chiropractic. So, you know, there's, I've got a million reasons for him to have to be touching me all the time. It's great. 
and he just naturally is a cuddler and a yeah he's it's great it's really so good. So you guys are both the, see, that's the, Dave is that physical person and I am not that physical person at all. So yeah, wait a second. I know a lot of people who aren't. So Kirsten, is Austin's love language physical touch as well? I think predominantly, yeah. Well, that's yeah. lucky that you're balanced that way because it doesn't it's always really like fortunate. You know, it's, it was funny because after we had that conversation, um, we were down in Orlando, I was hanging out with a friend of mine who I thought was very physical, but then I started realizing she really wasn't. And before I left, I love getting hugs and I've been deprived of <laughs> not, being, not being with Austin for a whole week, right? <laughs> so I knew she wasn't physical, but I asked her very nicely if she wouldn't mind giving me a hug. And I, and I said, I know it's not your thing, but would you give me a hug? <laughs> she did. You're like, I just need to be touched. I and well, I text Elaine and her and her husband, who were also at that event, and told them that I needed hugs that week, too. So I made sure that I was getting them. It was great. Well, if I could hug you, I would. How's that? I know you would. You give hug. me hugs, too. You I'd did. give you a high five. Here we go. There you go. <laughs> so, well, so what love language are you? So I am, I, you know, I every time I do it, I'm a little bit different. And I think that, that sometimes our love languages shift a little bit based on our personal situations. Um, I love words of affirmation. I like, um, I'm a big feedback person. And so if people tell me you're doing great, good job, I mean, that's part of what I do as a coach, right? So right. Um, I, I, I enjoy it as well. So tell me I'm doing a good job, guys. <laughs> You, you are, are fabulous. You did a great job. job with me. I had oh a good time gosh. with my mother because of you. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> and, and then, um, so best words of affirmation. Yep. And then acts of service is my is another one that that's res really resonates with me, and that's about um, doing kind things for the other person. So uh, you know, the honey do list. If you live in a house where you know that that's a, a something in the in the list of the family things. Um, or even just, you know, let me go to the grocery store for you. Let me do this for you. And I, and I find that do the dishes, please. Yes. <laughs> I was lying in bed sick last night and I could hear Austin out there doing the dishes. It made me so happy. Aww. Yeah. I know we have such dishes. sweet guys like Dave, Dave is, it would be the act of service guy too. I'm just sitting here going, man, I'm really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it's hard because again, if you're, you know, where you end up coming into conflict, maybe not so much conflict, but it's like when your love language is completely different than theirs. So my, yeah. da my daughter is not a physical touch person. She doesn't like to be, she has her little bubbles. She likes to be in her little mm. bubble. She'll, and she's very appreciative. And, and if you ask her for a hug, she'll give you one, but she doesn't just, you know, give it to you. And her dad is a big physical touch guy. And so They've kind of figured each other out and they, yes. they've got it and they, they know how to manage each other, but it's hard if you're not, you know, aligned or you don't kind of acknowledge and recognize that you're different. It is. It's weird. Now we're missing. So, okay. We've got physical, we've got, um, quality time, quality time, gifts, we got your mom in the gifts, acts of service and words and, of affirmation and words of that. We covered them all. That we was did. amazing. Well, and the reality is that, you know, like I said, sometimes you'll have one that you're dominant, but when there's actually a great online test that you can take, and they've got um, on the fivelovelanguages.com, oh. you can go in and take the quiz, and you can discover your own love language. So, Stacey, if you haven't done that, it would be fun for you and, and Dave to both of yes. you. how I discovered my love language. That's cool. I am so, I'm going to have both of us do that. That's awesome. So, I have to tell you, Diane, again, I know you don't do this because it's an ADHD thing, but... You know that relationships, you know, um, are huge. Melissa Orlov's written a book on the effects of ADHD on marriage that everybody goes, oh, my God, when they read that book. It's like, holy crap, now I know why this is happening. And what I found really great was having a template, like having a, you've got five different ways that, you know, five different languages of love. And if you can figure out which one you are and maybe which one the other person is, it gives you a new way to interact and awareness. Yeah. And that was amazing to me because when, you know, when we're just going through our lives, it's hard to categorize things and make sense of them, especially when it comes to things like emotions and love. Yeah, and, and how often are you able to take yourself, you know, unless you're really conscientious about it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my husband his language of love was just to pull his pants down and move me as he walked up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> it 
And I have absolutely no idea what I was saying before that happened. Oh my God. We'll let Diane talk. <laughs> Well, I love what you're saying because that's really it, and and, and it's also can be a, a fun sort of thing as well. So one is kind of figuring out what your partner's love language is, even if you don't uh, take the quiz, but you can try different stuff. And sometimes I don't know how long you guys have been married, but you know if you get kind of bored of trying different stuff, you know, go through the list of love languages and say, wow, I wonder, I wonder which one, I wonder what I could do, and which one more resonates, and if I, you know. Do they get more out of this piece of it? If I if I do your laundry for you, or do you get more if I you know, I'm just gonna spend a day and I'm gonna say great things and thank you for everything? Right, exactly. And let's see what works the best. Exactly. And it's and for me as a mom, I think that's just the other piece of it is kind of spending the time to figure out what my kids' love language was because you want your kids to feel appreciation and feel love and they may you know, they may not hear it the way you give it. So it's a really important piece. You know what I was thinking when Stacy was talking, when Elaine was here, we came up with another um, play type, and don't ask me to remember what it was right now, you can watch the video, um, <laughs> but I was thinking, you know, humor is another love language. When somebody makes me laugh, um, you know, whether it's pulling their pants down and mooning me, which I'm a little jealous, that's, <laughs> I, like, I would have, I would have loved to have that really good laugh just seeing it. Um, <laughs> We're telling a joke because I'm horrible at remembering jokes, but I love hearing them. Right. So, and just having fun. Oh my God. If somebody has a great idea that's just fun or can take something that's boring and have fun with me, holy crap. I am in love with them. Right. So yeah. I think that there needs to be a sixth language of love. Which is humor? Humor. Well, yeah. and that's the thing about, I mean, that's, that's your thing. I mean, that's what Play Day She is all about is, you know, how do you bring more fun and humor into it? And I, I love, Stacey, the, the mooning piece. My guess is that that's quality time. How more intimate can you be <laughs> showing somebody your backside? <laughs> I know. It's like, and you know, he's supposed to be at work today. He's like, I'm staying home today, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh, I have a show to shoot. Well, he showed me. <laughs> yeah. That'll teach you. That'll teach me. Oh my God! Well, I think the thing is, and so for me, being a non-ADHD or um, living with somebody with ADHD, I think that to take this a step further beyond the languages of love and going back to that whole, how can I accept that people are doing the best that they can in the moment? Yeah, you know, and it's so important because it's the only way you can have compassion. And and you get stuck in this whole, they're, what they're doing is wrong or what they're doing is bad, and it and it makes it difficult to interact with them. And if you can get to the point where you can say, okay. Anybody who is going through what they're going through this moment with the mindset that they have would believe or, you know, would have that reaction. You know, if it's getting, they get angry and you're like, wait, wait a second. What did I, I didn't do anything. You know, it, it's about having compassion and about understanding that they're doing the best that they can. It's what they have to work with. Exactly. It is. We need to take a break again for a moment for another sponsor spot. So we will be right back. Do you wish learning could feel more like, I don't know, playing? Well, ADD Crusher videos are guaranteed to help you create mental focus, get and stay motivated, manage time and more. And these videos are a blast to watch and learn from. They're like veggies for your brain, but candy for your eyes and ears. They're like having your own personal ADHD coach who's brilliant but crazy. And right now, you can get 20% off ADD Crusher videos by using promo code PLAYDHD20 at ADDCrusher.com. We're here with Diane Dempster of Impact ADHD and Something Progress Coaching. Inner Progress Coaching. Inner Progress Coaching. I, that was good. I remember two out of three words. You did. That was. I'm impressed, actually. That's good. Especially because I, I know her from Impact ADHD and all the ADHD stuff and p places, so. That's what I want to talk about <laughs> with this. So there's, there's the love languages, mm -hmm. and then there is ADHD, which I'm wondering because if you think about the extra layers that go into ADHD, for example, sensory issues. Mm -hmm. That could really make it hard for, you know, a couple where one is, one language is physical. For example, the holding hands, 
and sorry, I keep bringing it back to Dave and I, but that's a, that was like a huge thing in the beginning is that he wanted to always hold hands. And I, if I hold anyone's hand, that's all I'm thinking about is there's a hand, there's a hand, there's a hand. It's hot. It's hot. It's, is it sweaty? Is it sweaty? <laughs> you know, but that's how he shows. And so that's what I'm wondering with all of the ADHD stuff on top of it. You know, how do you suggest really mixing mixing it together so that these two people that are completely opposite in the way they speak can, you know, kind of get on the same page a little bit. Well, and I think that, I mean, the, the other example that I would give is like mine, I think I said was um, acts of service. Well, my husband is ADHD off the chart and trying to remember stuff for me when he's all he can do is focus on the stuff he's got to do for him. You know, yeah. it's really, really hard for him. And so he has to go out of his way to make things priority and it's difficult. And so that's where those systems and structures can come into place. And so if you know as an ADHD adult that your spouse has a love language that's not your automatic go-to, you might need to put a reminder in your phone that says, hey, don't forget to give Dave a hug because that's his love language, you know, or you might need to, um, you know, put it, let, have a conversation about it. And so if, if it's holding hands, maybe it's holding hands for just a short period of time or you know, mixing and matching it, but doing it in a way that you're honoring your own ADHD, but you're also finding a way to connect with them from a love language perspective. Which is great because I think they kind of have, have figured out how to, if, you know, like Austin or Dave, um, have, and like you with your husband have kind of figured out, you guys had to really change your perception of how things work too, to understand our world a little bit. And so it's just kind of taking it a step farther in, you know, communication. Well, and it goes back to that bigger sort of thing. It's like if I can see you as, you know, if, if you and I made plans to do something and you were going to do something for me and you totally spaced on it, I would go, wow, she just forgot. It's not a big deal. But if my husband does it, dude, what are you doing? You're supposed to get this done for me. And that's just you know this is my language. Put it on your phone. Well, but that's the point is that kind of like how easy is it and we all do it. It's like if somebody's our partner or our spouse or our close confidant, you know, it's like, well, they're supposed to know. They're supposed to, they're supposed to do it a certain way. They're supposed to get it. And so again, it gets back to that whole, if I believe that you're doing the best that you can, instead of railing you when something doesn't go right, I'll go, wow, he must have forgotten. Maybe I, what can I do to subtly remind him because I know that he wants to do something that's kind for me. Right, right. And the last thing he wanted to do was to let you down or whatever. Well, especially because if I'm going to get mad. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so um, there's, I wish I could come up with a name and I don't want to go searching right now, but we're actually going to have a, a reference to this video on our website later um, in the week that this video is posted. Um, the video was actually from a um, like a college graduation speech that somebody gave and it was called like water to a fish hmm. and as soon as I saw that I thought you know we've I've said in several different contexts with the coaching community you know who invented water it certainly wasn't a fish because fish have no perception that they're right. in water that's just where they are right and this is what the whole speech was really about that you know we live in our own little bubble and sometimes we forget that other people have a different reality and, and see and do things differently. So, um, which goes back to what Diane is saying, just appreciating that, you know, different people, people are different than we are and we have to take that into consideration. So, and the last thing I want to tell you, Diane, cause I don't think I told you how things went with my mother that day. Oh yeah. Was, so I had a plan. My mother loves gifts. I had my play DHD t-shirts with me. I had two of them left. And so I gave my mother a Play DHD t-shirt when she arrived and a couple of our pins. Aww. And I had asked her, I had emailed her and asked her if she wanted to go to Universal Studios with me. She's a big Harry Potter fan and so am I. And I figured she'd already gone because she lives in Florida, but she hadn't. So I said, I'm gonna bring you to, we're gonna go see Harry Potter. You haven't seen it yet. So I brought her, I paid for everything. She hates rides. I told her ahead of time, you don't have to go on the rides. It's fine with me. I'm going to go on the rides though. I bought a fast pass for me so she didn't have to wait. Right. And we went around Universal Studios on that side of the, you know, you get a choice of which side you go on. 
and we got to um, Hogwarts and um, Diagon Place, and oh my God, it's incredible. Holy crap. That place, if you have not been there yet, oh my God. So cool. Yeah, I was disappointed in most of the rides, except for one ride, one roller coaster that they had at Harry Potter Land there. Um, but we had a great time because she didn't have to wait for me. I was giving her things, you know, dur during the day. We bought some presents. I got her a hat. She had my T-shirt. We both had our T-shirts on, our <laughs> T-shirts. Awesome. She really got into it, too, because I was taking pictures and doing video, and she was helping me with it. At one point, I took a picture with Spider-Man. And I wanted to put my fingers up behind him. And I, I thought I better ask because they have a photographer taking pictures too. And so I asked him and he said, oh no, I can't do that because you know, it could get out on the internet. And I'm thinking, oh Jesus Christ, I'll get somebody else to dress up like Spider-Man. <laughs> Whatever. But she thought it was hilarious. So we had a great time together because I got to do my physical stuff, which was walking around and doing these rides and she got presents. So, it was perfect. You guys married your love language perfectly. It was great. She has no idea, but you know, she had a good time. She actually ended up staying overnight, but she had planned to leave at the end of the day. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it was good. It was Aww. good. Awesome. I'm so happy for you. That sounds like it came out. You were so grumpy about it the day before. I was anxious about it because my mother and I have not really had a good, um, any, well, any time just the two of us together in particular but we haven't really had a good relationship in a year so um i think it was just at least creating you know a memory and a starting point you know hopefully we'll talk more in the future but right now i was just happy to have that so well and that's the thing it's about coming from a place of curiosity rather than you know no. judgment i mean it's it's everybody if everybody's different then it's your job to figure out how they tick right and and it was a puzzle, not a problem. It's a puzzle, not a problem. I know you're going to use that. <laughs> I am. I need to blog about that. I love that saying. That's a great saying because it's true. She said, it popped out of her mouth and she said, oh, I have to remember that one. That was good. I got to use that again. And I think it was two days later I said to her, did you remember that, what you said? And she's like, what was it again? <laughs> so I was like, it's stuck in my head because it was great. Yeah. So Miss Diane, we at the end of every show, <clears throat> have our guests choose truth or dare oh man wow I, i'm gonna say truth how's that truth. okay okay let's see um what is the most embarrassing thing that you've done to get the attention of your husband oh, <laughs> wow you know uh, <laughs> truth you know, I am one of those people that um, I, when I get really angry or frustrated, I, I tend to use my emotions to like shift the energy in the conversation. And my husband's a very sensitive person. He doesn't, um, he doesn't like for me to be too upset. And so I have to tell you that the truth is that on occasion, not very often, I have gotten more upset in order to stop the, the fight. You're a woman. <laughs> She's doing drama, Stacy. I awesome. know there might be a little bit of ADHD there. <laughs> there might be a little bit. <laughs> Just a tad. So I, and I had a great time playing with you, as I always do. I love spending time with you. So well, thank you so much for playing with us today. Well, this has been such a blast. Stacey, it's been good to get to know you. And I know, you too. I can't wait to use my new tricks on my husband, <laughs> assuming he gets some pants on. Or not. I say, or I not. Say, it sounds like you're going to have an opportunity soon because he's waiting <laughs> upstairs for you without his pants <laughs> on. <laughs> he's calling. Yeah, baby. All right. Well, thank you for another episode of Play DHD. Go and have some fun. Bye, guys. Have a Bye. great day. For more information on Play DHD, visit our website at playdhd.com or come play with us during recess at Facebook forward slash playdhd and on Twitter at hashtag playdhd. Oh, look, a squirrel. <laughs>